Heavy Metal Rock. Global Mind. I'm Robert Cavuto, and today on My Global Mind, we are speaking with Paul Gilbert for his upcoming release of the instrumental album, the Dio album, that's going to be due out April 7th. Paul, welcome, and thank you so much for taking the time to speak with me today. I truly appreciate it. Thanks for having me. That's a cool Van Halen guitar you've got behind you. Yeah. I saw, I saw that tour in, uh, in, in 1979. That was one of my first concerts. Blew my mind. Life-changing. Yeah. I, I um, When I was a kid, I, I had a a lark guitar and i wanted it to look like that so i i filled the, the cavity with wood putty <laughs> <laughs> and when it dried i spray painted it and it weighed like a million pounds you, you gotta do what you gotta do yeah. dio is my jam i grew up with dio so it's it's huge to be hearing all these great songs that you put together so it's a wonderful album. Really, really great. Oh, thank you. Well, I, I grew up with this stuff too. I'll you know never forget hearing Neon Nights on the radio and just going like, "What is that?" Yeah, that <laughs> and, was... and then and then being being surprised it was Sabbath because you know I was, already knew about Sabbath with Ozzy, right? And then going like, "Wait a minute, something's you know there's a whole new dimension." And then, of course, you know, discovering Dio led to discovering Rainbow. And then, yes. you know, later on, his solo stuff came out. It was just, you know, super high energy and, and amazing melodies at the same time. That's hard to do. Like a lot of times when 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 music gets more and more high energy, the the, the melodic element tends to start yes. diminishing. Yep. And so to, to, to keep both of those things in full focus... That's hard. That's almost impossible. It is amazing how Dio was able to do that. Well, I was going to talk to you about this. Was I thought his voice was almost like an instrument unto itself. It came across with tone. It came across with emotion. It came across with passion. And and your guitar playing picked up on that exactly. So it was a very symbiotic relationship between your guitar and his voice. So you did a great job on it. Well, well, thank you. Well, there's, there's a couple things I figured out. Uh, and one of them was, you know, of course, singers have words, and with with the guitar, like uh, immediately, I'm I'm <laughs> I'm at a loss because I I can't form a word in the same way that that a, the human mouth can, yeah. but I can approximate vowels, and that's that really is helpful. So, for example, you know, the holy diver. If I'm trying to say the word holy, there's two vowels there, o e. You know, holy, yeah. oh, there's an O and there's an E. And if you if you play just a straight note with, not, you know, you don't really do anything to it, that's kind of like an O, you know, right. O. But then if I went the E, I, I like pinch it for a pick harmonic and that turns it more into an E. So O, E. So you you can get, you can push in that direction of, of, of following the the curve of of where the vowels are going. And that really makes a big difference. So the, what I found myself doing was gravitating towards guitars that had less frets. Really? Because, you know, if I play a 24 fret guitar, the, it, you know, the, the, the edge of the fretboard is sticking out further and further. And I'm, I'm starting to bump into it when I'm trying to get pick harmonics. If I play like a 21 fret guitar, I've got I've got more room for pick harmonics. Wow, that's fascinating. I never even thought of that before because no, you know it, it, it's it's funny because you know I, I I tend to favor twenty two fret guitars for whatever reason. Yeah, and I'll, you know I always get the comments. The heavy metal guys will write in and they'll say like you know dude why why aren't you using twenty four? And I didn't really know the answer other than like you know I just get confused because there's too many options. But you know I I what I found is because I I. I um, you know, during the lockdown, I was trying to give myself something to look forward to. So I, I, I would go on Reverb and 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 buy like inexpensive Ibanezes from the early '80s. Mm -hmm. And one of one of the ones I found was the uh, the old Roadstar, or Roadstar Two, I guess it is. Yeah. And and the neck is like a Strat. You know, it's it's a you know maple neck, twenty one frets, real curved radius, and uh, a great bridge. Like the 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 bridge you know, has really good 
like the best sustaining bridge I've ever played. Wow. You know, I wasn't expecting that. I was like, man, this guitar is just magic for sustain. And that was like probably my main guitar for the album because I, I could just get reach those pick harmonics so so easily. And the sustain was so good. It takes some getting used to because with, with a curved radius, uh, if you bend, it can fret out. And so you got to keep your action pretty high. Oh, okay. but that but that became beneficial because all my slide stuff would be real clean and uh, and i put eights on it so it's, it's, it's still easy to play yeah but but that was that was like the new discovery it's like oh less fr you know you think less is more you know is less but actually it opened up the pick harmonic world so much and that really helped me to to like follow the the, the, the vowel curve that's fascinating you, you know the thing that I, out of all of your hard work on this album you know the thing that fascinated me the most in holy diver when you picked up when Dio says, mm, you know, he hums that in the beginning. Yeah. And I'm listening to it for the first time. I go, oh, he must have a, he must have somebody singing on this song. <laughs> I thought that was Dio's voice to the T and you nailed that. And I was totally blown out of the water. Hence picking up the guitar to play it for you today. It was just like, wow, that was so impressive. How did you do that? Well, that was probably slide. Really? Okay. And I, I and I put a, you know, one of the kind of inventions I came up with was to, is to put a really powerful magnet on the lower horn of the guitar. If there's a pickguard, I'll put it, you know, route it out and put it under the pickguard. If not, I'll, I'll just, you know, take some double-sided tape and just tape it on there. And then, you know, you get a chrome steel slide and it sticks on there. And it, it, it takes a little bit of practice to like aim your finger so you can just you know get yeah. it get it and put it back real quick but i've been working on it for a few years now so now it's like second nature and so you know of course in the studio you can do overdubs but i i do it you know on the fly so wow. it, it's nice to be able to like you know get a little bit of that slide character and then whomp, put it back and then you're back to the fingers and I, and i must admit like spending time with slide has really improved my ability to play horizontally Mm -hmm. which even if you don't have a slide a lot of times i'm playing a, as if i had a slide but just using the skin yeah yeah and and i found that you know the the difference is the slide tends to be a little more uh more soft and more resonant and maybe a little more swampy mm -hmm. you know it sounds a little more southern down home right you right, know so right. I don't, it's rare that i'll do a whole a whole song with slide because that, that's not in character with what dio was was doing but you know, a little taste of it here or there is really nice. And then I'm back to the to the finger, almost like imagining that I'm playing with a slide. But you know, and it you know it 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 definitely digs a hole in your callus. But it, it but it it just makes it feel right. Oh, the whole album is great, and I really enjoyed it. And you know, from the press release, there's a crazy story about what how you were inspired to put this album together and how it all came to you. Could you share a little bit about that? Well, there there were a bunch of things. I mean, the, the um. I think in in the you know in, in the bio that I wrote, I saw a Dio hat in the back of somebody's car. <laughs> and you know, where, where I live in, in in Portland, you know, people love bumper stickers and slogans, and it was just like everybody's gotta have their, you know, their their opinion, you know, <laughs> blasting out there visually. And it was getting to the point where I was just like, I don't even open my eyes. It's just it's just like too much and then i saw a dio cap and i thought oh <laughs> finally finally something that's, that's musical and and something that i love and, and i could absolutely you know i, I some, some, some you know i've got a friend <laughs> <laughs> somebody on portland likes heavy in portland and seattle loves heavy metal yeah yeah <laughs> And, uh, and so it just cheered me up that day. And, and, but be, be besides that, I mean, that wasn't the only thing I would say. The main thing is just my overall, uh, journey into melody via copying singers, uh, both with slide and, 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 and just, you know, and also with the, the fingers yeah. and, 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 and one day I thought, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to sit down and I'll make a list of singers I want to copy. You know, just so, just so if I, you know, if I if I need some, some inspiration, I go to that list and and just look and see like, oh, who am I in the mood for today? And uh, you know, like the singer menu. Yeah. And the first name that I wrote down was Ronnie James Dio. Yeah. And and I already like I I had been using uh, the verse melody of Long Live Rock and Roll for a lesson at, at my online school. You know, I probably 
taught that 15 or 20 times just because it's, it's it's so you can get so deep and in, into in you know it would seem on the face of it if you if you transcribed it you know if you wrote down that melody and of course when you, when you write if you, if you write down with the little black dots it you know it's it's you're not really supposed to put all the elements of expression because it would just it would be tedious to write and it would be overwhelming to read you know you, in, in a way it's the job of the performer yeah. to have those instincts and the, and the what you write on the paper is it's just like general outline but that, that's the thing is it's like those el those elements of expression that's 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 the thing you know you, you know the, the notes themselves are relatively simple but the the process of breathing life into it as a teacher i have to, i i feel it's my job to to make a very clear list of of how to get it done you know i if, if i tell a student you you, know, you just need to work on your feel I'm, I'm not doing my job that's not helpful that's too too general right but if i say like okay we've got a list you know it's a lot of times it's it's about contrast it's like okay what what is every element that we can that we can have a contrast with for example the, the vowels i was talking about like the contrast of o and e you know and 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 because if we only keep one if it's all if it's all just o, 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 o or if it's all e, e, e it immediately starts to 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 become robotic yep. but but if you vary it if you have contrast you're breathing life into it and that's just one element you know there's so many other ones you know there, there's okay. uh volume you know do you hit it quiet or loud you know there's there's length is it is you, do you play the note cut it off right away or do you let it sustain or somewhere in between like when, when you if you do cut it off how long does it last and you know it, if you if you actually make a list of all these elements you know you'd think like oh this is just overwhelming and impossible but you, you start to develop an instinct about it where you don't have to like think about it and you can feel it, but they're all, you know, they all require some kind of technique. You know, it's like, if you, you want to put on the brakes and stop a note, how do you do it? Yeah. You know, do you have to lift this finger up? Do you, do you mute it here? Do you mute it some other place? You know, do you turn your volume down, you know, there, there, so there's, there's all these little details that, um, that as, as a teacher, I get into, and then that benefits me. You know, the teacher learns the most. That's true. That's true. You know, Dio is only one aspect of this album that you put out. You have three tremendous guitar players that you are trying to replicate on top with Dio singing over it. You got Tony Iommi, you got Richie Blackmore, and you got Vivian Campbell, who are all tremendous and different styles in their own right. So you nailed all their styles. Did you talk to anybody or talk to any of those guys? Are you friends with anybody about little tips or little tricks to <laughs> nail their their feel well i i grew up playing that stuff in, in cover bands so that that was in a way that th those three players were a big part of just forming my instincts and my musical dna right. um i've never met tony or, or or richie i used to run into vivian all the time in the grocery store because we used to live in the same neighborhood when i lived in la and we didn't really talk music we, you know we were more like you know there's a sale on carrots, you know, it was just like, <laughs> uh, but it was, it was, it was nice to, you know, the, the, the sort of the Hollywood music scene, like, oh, wow, yeah. you know, one of my childhood or teenage heroes, yes, you know, it's, it's got a shopping cart right next to me. You know, this is, this is awesome. <laughs> uh, but, you know, again, again like, you know, I, I probably heard Richie Blackmore first because, um, I had the machine head record and uh when I was a kid, but I, I couldn't, it was actually before I even played guitar, I had that record. So, you know, uh, it was it was all completely out of reach for, for being able to play. You know, I, I, I it was in my ears, but not on my fingers. Tony Aomi, the the, uh, the Black Sabbath stuff was the first thing that I got actually working on the instrument. Cause I, you know, by the time I was like 11, I was I, I'd been playing a couple of years, my teacher lent me the uh we sold our souls to rock and roll album mm -hmm. and I, le I learned a power chord i started to play sweet leaf and iron man and that kind of stuff and the the little looping solo at the end of sweet leaf that, bah, 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 that was like really important and and when i when i look at you know when i'm trying to do some like complicated solo thing now 
Sweet Leaf is still in there at its core. <laughs> You know, so it really formed my physical habits and, you know, that it kind of grew out of that because that was like the one reliable lick that I had. Right. And and then I might, if I played it in another song, because, you know, that was the only lick I had. So, I, <laughs> you know, and then, then the, the, you know, the other song might be a different tempo or a different key. And so I would have to kind of go, OK, well, I got to change the notes to fit the key and I got to maybe do a little modification so it fits this new groove. And so that it would grow very organically that way, but it, it, at, the, at its core, sweet leaf is, is, is there. Now it took me a lot longer. I, I guess by the time I was 15, I was in a band with a B3 player and we started doing Kill the King live yeah. version. Mm -hmm. And so, and I, it, it's funny because a lot, a lot of times the stuff I, I wouldn't, you know, this is before YouTube. I, so I would just have to guess at his, at his fingerings. So like that arpeggio part in the middle, the boom, but it's really fast. That I didn't know he was like playing a chord and and somehow picking it because that that's like it's really hard to do. For, at least for me, that's like so hard to do. So I did it as like a stretch, and I you know I've got big enough hands where I can actually. It's a horrible reach, but I, I can just barely get it. And which is a lot less demanding for the right hand. So it's sort of like wh which hand is going to be the one to suffer. <laughs> <laughs> and my 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 left hand's probably a little better than my right. So I, you know, I would I would give the, the hard work to the left hand where Richie was doing the hard work with his right. But this you know it's the same notes and uh, you know, what however you can get it to work. You know, you were you're like me, and you alluded to this earlier. Um, my first introduction to Black Sabbath was uh, Heaven and Hell. And my first introduction really to Ozzy was Blizzard of Oz. And that was my introduction to do those guys. And then I went backwards for Dio into Rainbow. And by yeah. that time, you know, um, what was it? Mob Rules was coming out. So I was a fan of that. And you picked some tremendous, you picked all my favorite songs on this. Uh, you know, songs I played in the cover band, Don't Talk to Strangers. You got also um, Kill the King, we did that. So there was great songs on there, Long Live Rock and Roll. So how did you come about to pick these songs? Are they your favorite, perhaps? Well, of course, it's, it's, it's my album, so I get to pick my favorites. Yeah. But but I had, you know, I have more favorites than that. So I had to decide, like, okay, well, I love Stargazer. Yeah. And, and I love Light in the Black, and I love uh, Gates of Babylon. But what I, what I the way I ended up working it out was I realized, like, Stargazer has a long instrumental section. It's really cool. I'd love to play it, but this is the Dio album. And so I, I want to aim things more towards the vocals. So that's why, like, I would pick Man on the Silver Mountain, which has a shorter guitar solo, but, you know, a, a lot of singing. And and then so that that was it. Like, you know, the like Light in the Black, amazing song, tons of, you know, long keyboard solo and stuff. I almost did Terror Woman, but again, like this long keyboard solo at the beginning. And, and I, I thought, you know, I, I want to put my time into the vocals. One of my favorites too that wasn't on there was the shed of a long live rock and roll. Oh yeah, that's one of my personal favorites too. That was other than that, I thought your album was stellar. The selection was great. <laughs> well, maybe I'll do volume two. <laughs> Which song was the most challenging to do from a vocal standpoint? To Im you know imitate Ronnie. Well. The first thing that comes to mind is like by far the most challenging from a guitar standpoint was that solo in Neon Nights. Wow. I'm 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 guessing because the, the the chords, it's like it's it's like seventh chords, it's major and minor. It's almost like this jazz halfway to jazz, and uh, and 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 it's just unusual. Like it's it's just suddenly this different flavor thrown in there, and it really kind of threw me. And so it took me like a hundred takes to get that. And I, at the end, I was really happy with it, but it was a long process. And then Kill the King was like one take. <laughs> so, so, uh, so that was in the world of guitar. For the vocal part, everything, I mean, everything was sort of like equally challenging because I, I, was, I was going line by line. Because I really wanted to get the details, you know, I didn't. I know, in a way, I didn't want to put myself into it. You know, I, I wanted to like copy Ronnie with a very, you know, with with arcane detail, you know, with with, with or with fine detail, and uh, in in a way, 
I don't I don't know if that was the best choice because if if I would have just done it by memory and sort of done my own with my own instincts, I might have actually had like a better flow and maybe a little bit higher energy, but I wouldn't have learned as much. Sure. And and I and and to me I really wanted this to be like the best guitar lesson from the best guitar teacher in the world, Ronnie James Dio. Yeah. And that, that I'm going to get by by listening. And, and, and instead of like just going from memory, I was like, no, I'm going to, you know, so I went to YouTube and found as many isolated vocals as I could, which is, it's, it's always amazing what you can find. Like, you know, I hold, you know, you, 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 can, you can go there. And it's just like, you know, some, somehow the isolated track is on there and I'd put it in the amazing slow downer and just, you know, slow it down and really listen to the detail. And, uh, I suppose like some of some of the things that were that were that first I wasn't sure how I was going to do it was like the whisper in Don't Talk to Strangers. I thought, how am I going to get a whisper? You know, <laughs> <laughs> and, and I, but so I ended up taking like two distortion pedals and cranking them up just to get a hiss and then running that through a wah wah pedal and going like, whoosh, 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 you know, and, and, and so oh my you know, that, that was my. That was my solution for the for the whisper, um, and then of, there were certain things where it was really helpful to have a guitar with a sustainer pickup. Um, so, like the 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 you know the big opening note in Last in Line when he goes you know he does the quiet intro. Now we are coming, ah! you know. Then there's this like amazing long note, and you know with with a guitar when you attack a note that's the loudest point and then it you know unless you're you know getting feedback to a loud amp it, it's gonna it's just gonna die you know so you slowly lose lose volume ronnie's not losing any volume when he sings that you know <laughs> he's, he's just keeping it there and so you know I, I thought you know i i i have to get that to happen so you know, I, I suppose I could have just, you know, found the sweet spot next to the next to the speaker and got feedback. But I've I've, I've got a guitar with a sustainer pickup, Lord. and so put that on with. And I used to slide because right. that's that seemed like the most accurate vibrato for that. And then I had a, you know Boss delay pedal for the very end. So oh, oh, oh. and that was so much fun Sounds because like it, it, you know just to have all those elements and and to be able to just get that note just just right that just felt great you know there's no no synthesizers no keyboards on this album are you going to put a little sticker like queen did for theirs and say <laughs> no synthesizers on your booklet it, it, it was it was nice to be able to create some of that stuff like you know the whole holy diver intro yes, yes. and again that was the, the the delay pedal and then fading up the note with a volume control and and, and getting it to kind of you know putting like a little chorus pedal yes. on it to create this like pad of uh, you know the low synth note and then I, I think the I think the chords I might have done those in a note at a time because you get a little more clarity out of it that way and then uh, you know with Pro Tools you can you you know you can make the fade a little slick or or, or change the length of it you know and then we kind of put that together so there's some ed some editing involved but uh, came out good oh yeah and then and of course like the B three sounds in in Kill the King that was with a a, a um, uh, what do you call it? Leslie pedal. It's a Neo yeah. Instruments vent vent two, the great sounding Leslie pedal. And then it was, it was funny. You know, there's this there's this look that Billy Gibbons does, and it it always surprises me because I like it. it we, we play like um, you know if you're playing an A, and you do that those those the two magic notes like an E and a G, on the on the on the second and third string, and then you just you you finger pick the G. And it's like, oh, dun, 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 dun. and the the E just comes. You don't have to pick the E; it just comes through because it's sustaining. Yeah, yeah. And, and it's really like it's that, that's always a really surprising lick to me because you kind of expect that you have to pick both of them. Right. You would like, think, like yeah, that, logic would tell you. In, in theory, to me, that would make sense. But it actually sounds better just to hit the top one, and then the low one just some somehow magically comes through. Mm -hmm. I, and I did that same thing. I think the notes are different, but that was the technique for the for like the it, when the B three first enters on Kill the King, and it's like this trill, and I just and do that Billy Gibbons thing with the Leslie pedal, and it sounds perfect. And I'm sitting there doing that, going like, I can't believe this. You know, I, 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 it's, it's really, 
it really turned out better than I expected. Oh, I think it's a tremendous album and a tremendous amount of hard work went into it. And I, I, every time I listen to it, I hear something new. I didn't hear, I heard the hum. I heard the, you know, there was no keyboards, but it took, it took a little bit of time to figure out what you, not even to try and figure out how you're playing it, but it's like, oh, that's not a keyboard. Oh, that's not a voice. So kudos to you. You did a tremendous job on that. You know, I, I really love the album. I, I find new nuances every time I listen to it. I, oh, I, want, yeah. to, I want to be respectful to your time. One quick question. Uh, Mr. Big is coming back, coming back strong. Um, when do you think you'll have some uh, U.S. dates announced? I think, uh, well, the first part is in Japan and Asia in the summer. Uh, then we're going to take a break and start up again in 2024 early. Okay. So, yeah, I would. You know, we're just trying to. We're going to try to play everywhere. So you know, I, I would expect that to be. Uh, I don't know. Where we're going to start then, but I'm. I, I'm sure the U.S. will be in there. Great. I can't wait. I can't wait to see you guys. I saw you a couple of years back. I can't wait. Right before uh, he died, and now I'm really excited to see you guys again with the new drummer. Right. On. I'm. I'm excited to have Nick Di Virgilio, Nick Virgilio along too. He's yeah. he's just awesome. Not only as a drummer, but as a singer, and that's a big part of Mr. Big is the, is the harmonies, and so yes. he'll be really strong for that. Pat did a tremendous job all throughout that. So yeah, and I, I'm, I'm glad you guys are reforming for this and I think it's it's well-deserved and well-needed for us. So thank you very much for doing that. That's yeah, going to be a, a, a good challenge and, and, and worth the effort. Well, Paul, always a pleasure to speak with you. Always fascinating to talk to you. Thank you so very much. I really appreciate it today. Thank you. Right on. Thank you so much. All right, later Thank on. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Heavy metal rock. Oh, oh my.